Many of us have experienced sneezing and a runny nose during allergy season. These symptoms are seen with a condition called allergic rhinitis, also known as hay fever. As the most common allergy disorder in the world, allergic rhinitis affects 10 to 30% of children and adults in the US and in other industrialized countries. Studies have shown that untreated allergic rhinitis can significantly increase your risk of developing asthma later in life. The inflammation in your nose often spreads to your entire airway, a concept known as United Airway Disease, which we will talk about today in greater detail. We'll also talk about the recommended treatments for allergic rhinitis. Hi, I'm Dr. Maria Conley. Please spend a few minutes with me today as we talk about this very common problem. Allergic rhinitis, or hay fever, is due to the body's reaction to small particles in the air called allergens. The most important thing is to remember to avoid the allergen if possible. There are four major types of airborne particles that can cause allergy symptoms. First, pollen grains from trees, grasses, and weeds are the most common causes of outdoor seasonal allergies. A pollen grain is the male reproductive structure of a seed-bearing plant. Most pollen is shed in the early morning hours, but the wind carries the most pollen in the afternoon and evening hours. Many locations see high levels of tree and grass pollen in the spring and summer, while fall brings high weed pollen counts. Warm areas, areas of the country, such as California, may see elevated pollen counts for most of the year. We know that seasonal allergies have become more common in the past several years. Warmer temperatures across the globe are making the pollen season more intense and longer than in the past. Pollen production is also starting earlier in the year. Indoor allergens, such as house dust mites, cockroaches, and animal hair, can cause symptoms year round. Molds are also a big problem, especially in more humid climates, such as the southern U.S and the U.S. East Coast. It can be very helpful to have skin allergy testing done to find out what specific allergen you are allergic to so that you can potentially avoid it. If your allergy symptoms are not improving after avoidance of the allergen, nasal steroid sprays uh, such as fluticasone or Flonase are the most effective first-line treatment. It is important to keep your head down when spraying the steroid into your nose so that the medication doesn't drip down the back of your throat. You will also inhale while spraying and aim the spray away from the middle of the nose. It usually takes several days for the medication to have full effects, so it is important to use it every day during the allergy season. If you have a history of allergies, I would recommend starting your allergy medication a few weeks before the allergy season starts. I would then use your allergy medication every day until the allergy season is over. If a nasal steroid spray doesn't control your symptoms, other options include oral antihistamines, uh, such as Zyrtec, and nasal antihistamine sprays. If none of these methods are successful, some people benefit from allergy shots, otherwise known as subcutaneous allergen immunotherapy. We are now learning that it is very important to treat allergic rhinitis to lower your risk of developing asthma later in life. When you have allergic rhinitis, the inside lining of your nose and upper airway becomes swollen and inflamed, causing the symptoms of runny nose, nasal obstruction, and sneezing. But remember, the air that we breathe in comes through the nose and then travels down the upper airway and then it goes into the lower airway before going into the lungs. So you can see that it's all one continuous airway. The inflammation in the nose and the upper airway can spread to the lower airway and cause asthma. This concept is known as United Airway Disease. The interactions between the upper and lower airway have been studied for decades. We know that over 80% of people with asthma also have rhinitis. And anywhere from 10 to 40% of patients with allergic rhinitis also have asthma. In patients with asthma, it's important to control the nasal symptoms 
to achieve optimal control of the lung symptoms. On the other hand, if you have allergic rhinitis and your allergy symptoms are not controlled by changing your environment or by using medications, you may want to consider getting a definitive diagnosis with a skin allergy testing so that you can find out what you are allergic to. If your body reacts abnormally to a specific pollen or other allergen, you may benefit from seeing an allergist to prevent that inflammation in your upper airway from getting worse. If that inflammation spreads to your lower airway, you may develop asthma, which causes chronic difficulty breathing in many people. Don't ignore your hay fever symptoms. Get control of your inflammation in the airway before asthma develops. Thank you. I'm Dr. Maria Codley.